Okay, now for seven, part two of the same uh, paper, June, October 2020, Pure Mathematics P4, International A-Level at Excel. They have done part one on, on a separate video. This is part two. Um, this question here is telling us to integrate this expression. It's a general indefinite integral. Um, and we have to integrate this. Now, this is a typical type of question where we have to split this into separate fractions. Um, because you have a product of linear factors in the denominator. So we can split this into separate, separate fractions and then we can integrate. However, we have to be very careful that we check to see first whether it's an improper fraction or a proper fraction. Um, if it's a proper fraction, we can go ahead straight away. If it's an improper fraction, we have to realize that it splits up in a slightly different way because we're going to have a whole number part. Now, this is an improper fraction because the numerator has an order which is the same as the order of the denominator. If the order of the numerator is either the same or greater than the order of the denominator, then it will be an improper fraction. If it is such that the numerator is of an order less than that of the denominator, it will be a proper fraction. So this is an improper fraction because the numerator has the same order as the denominator. This is a quadratic and this is also a quadratic. If you expand it, you'll get x squared as your highest power. So if you have a quadratic over a quadratic, if you have them having the same order, then you know, the difference between the order is zero. So you'll have like a whole number part, which is um, a constant. So this will split up in a particular way, 6x squared minus 16 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. If it was a proper fraction, you would just have a over x plus 1 plus b over 2x minus 3. But because it's an improper fraction, you're going to have a whole number part, which is going to be a constant, because the difference between the orders is 0. So you're going to have a plus, and then you're going to have a constant over the first denominator here, plus another constant, which you're going to call c, over the second one. Okay, so that's how this splits up as an improper fraction. It's very important for you to realize that. Okay, if this was, uh, if the difference between them was of order 1, for example, if this was a cubic and this was a quadratic, then you'd have ax plus b as your whole number part, and then c over x plus 1 plus d over 2x minus 3. So it's important for you to realize that. The difference between the orders it determines what the whole number is going to be. Okay, if it's a, um, if it's the same order, it's a constant. If it's, the difference is 1, it will be linear ax plus b if the difference is 2 it will be quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c and then you'll have your you know the other letters and splitting up the denominator like this now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 on this side you'll be left with 6x squared minus 16 on this side you'll be left with a times x plus 1 um, times 2x minus 3 plus b times, well, the x plus 1 part will cancel out, leaving you with 2x minus 3, and plus c times, in this case, the 2x minus 3 will cancel out, leaving you with x plus 1. Now, we can use very, uh, a variety of methods to try to find what a, b, and c is. For a, it's probably easy to com compare the coefficients of x squared. So on this side, you've got 6. On this side, you're going to have a times 2x squared, that will be the only x squared terms, that will be 2a. So therefore we can say a is equal to 3. And to find what um, b and c are, and probably the easiest way is substitute x equals minus 1. That will cause this and this to cancel out, and that will leave us with b. So if you put minus 1 in here, that's 6 times minus 1, which is 6 minus 16 is equal to, and if I put um, minus 1 in here, this cancels out. Minus 1 there, that cancels out. I'm left with b times um, 2 times minus 1, which is minus 2, um, minus 3, which is minus 5. So I'm left here with minus 10 equals minus 5b. So therefore, I can say b is equal to 2. So a is 3 and b is 2. Now we've got to find what c is. To find what c is, we can compare the coefficients, for example, or the constants. If we compare the constants on both sides of this identity, we got on the left side, if we compare the constants, I could also put x equals two-thirds in. It would probably be okay, um, but I think it will be easy to compare the constants. On this side, we got minus 16, 
and here we got a times minus 3 minus 3a three here we got plus minus 3b and here we got plus c so i can just put the value of a and b in here so i have minus 16 equals minus 3 times a which is 3 minus 3 times b which is 2 plus c <clears throat> so this gives me minus 16 equals minus 9 minus 6 plus c so um, you have minus 16 equals minus 15 plus c so c is equal to minus 16 plus 15 which is minus 1 so c is equal to minus 1 so we got c is equal to minus 1 so now we can replace a with 3 so we have our fraction our original fraction which is 6x squared minus 16 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 is equal to um, 3 plus 2 over x plus 1 and minus 1 over 2x minus 3. So now this is ready for us to integrate. Now I can integrate this. So I can take this and I can say the integral of 6x squared minus 16 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 with respect to x is the same thing as the integral of 3 plus 2 over x plus 1 minus 1 over 2x minus 3 integrated with respect to x. Now integrating this is going to give me 3x plus 2 times the lin of the modulus of x plus 1 and minus uh, 1 times the lin of, let me just leave some space because I have to divide by the differential what's inside the function. Here the differential what's inside the function is 1, so no problem there, but here we're going to have something else. So lin of the modulus of 2x minus 3 um, divided by 2, because divide by the differential of 2x minus 3, so that's going to be a half plus c. Now, how did it tell us to express the answer? Okay, so... The way that they have told us to express the answer, it's perfectly fine for me to leave my answer like this. I don't have to do anything more than this. Um, if I want to, I could have make it slightly simpler. I could combine these lins together if I want to, but it doesn't tell me to do that, so it's fine. So if I if, if I left it like this, it's okay. I could also wrote as lin um, of the modulus of x plus 1 squared minus the lin the modulus of 2x minus 3 to the power of a half plus c and then I could write this as lin 3x plus the lin of the modulus of x plus 1 squared divided by 2x minus 3 to the power of a half plus c I could write my answer like that if I wish to and that's perfectly fine but leaving it like this because the question didn't state any other any particular form Leaving it like this is perfectly acceptable. That's probably better in case you make a mistake, you know, when you go further on from this. Okay, so that's the answer to part two of question number seven. And I think that's the end of question number seven. Yes, that's the end of question number seven. Okay, so there we have it. Um, this is integration using partial fractions and other questions to do with integration um, using partial fractions can be found on this playlist. On this playlist you find other questions which are related to um, the questions on this paper. So other questions from this paper you can find, find in the playlist that should appear over here. You can subscribe to my channel clicking on this link and on the top of the page you'll find a card which takes you to another P4 paper you might want to watch. Thank you for watching and see you soon.